welcome to this Friday video. This is going to be the Chapter 2 Friday video, corresponding to Week 2, and it's going to cover questions 2 through 4, mainly because this is a nice little block of ability for me to talk about frequencies, to talk about percents, cumulative frequencies and cumulative percents, but also some graphics on them. So let's begin. Notice that this is going to be very similar to Exercise 2.17 from the textbook. So here's the data. We're given the class, we're given the frequency, and I'm going to put the class and the frequency over here in Excel. See how fast that was? You probably should have paused to wait for me to do it, but hey, we're all good. Notice two things. One, I added the 0 to 50 class, which is not on here, and two, I changed the order. I changed the order simply because it's going that will reflect this table that we have to calculate down here. Notice it starts at 50, goes to 100, so might as well continue this. So we're also given the class and the frequency. First thing we need to calculate is the cumulative frequency. The cumulative frequency is just the frequency of everything from that level smaller. So let's create a column called cumulative frequency. So what goes here is the value in that class plus everything less than that, it's 0. What goes here is the value in this class plus everything less than that, 6 plus 0. Everything in that class plus everything prior. Everything in that class plus everything prior. I'm going to copy and paste because I'm tired of typing. Those are the cumulative frequencies. So let's go ahead and put those in. 50 to 60, is, cumulative frequency is 6. Then 19, 31, 46, 50. Next column is the percent frequency, which means it's the frequency as a percent of the entire sample size. The frequency for this class is 6. As a percent of the entire sample size, it's 6 over 50. It's, it's the frequency in that class divided by the total sample size of 50. It's equal to the frequency in that class divided by the total sample size of 50. Oh, wait. It wants it in percents. This is in proportions. So it's not just divide B4 divided by 50. We have to make that into percents. So it's times 100. So this is equal to B5 divided by 50 times 100. And again, copy paste. Those are our percent frequencies. Now note that we hard-coded the 50, this 50 right here. If we go back and we include one more person in this, I'd have to go back and change all the 50s to 50 once. That's a waste of time. What I would like to do is refer this 50 to this cell here cell C8. To do that, I could do just C8. Now look what happens when I just call it C8. Copy and paste it. Something happened. Well, what happened? Let's go ahead and look at this one. This actually got translated as B4 over C4 because the references by default are relative. This referred to C8, which is just one to the left, which means that when you copy and paste, this will refer to C4, which is just one to the left. We don't want that. We want it to keep going to C8. To do that, we use dollar signs. Dollar sign C means it's going to be stuck in the C column. Dollar sign 8 means it's going to be stuck in the eighth row. So dollar sign C, dollar sign 8 means it's referring to cell C8, and that's not going to change at all. So I'm going to copy that, paste, and that gives us numbers that really do make sense. 
So 50 to 60, it's 12. 26. 24. 30. 8. And the total percent? It better be 100. Next is the cumulative frequency. The cumulative percent frequency. The cumulative frequency was the frequency in that class plus everything before. The cumulative percent frequency is going to be the percent frequency in that class plus everything before. Or it's going to be the cumulative frequency divided by the total sample size. This is still going to be 0. So this cumulative, I'm just going to call it cum percent. This is either going to be equal to the percent frequency plus everything that came before, or it's going to be equal to the cumulative frequency divided by 50. And remember, times 100. Or it's going to equal the cumulative frequency divided by $c$8 times 100. Those are three ways of actually calculating the cumulative percent frequency. So let's look into these again. And on the keyboard, I'm hitting F2 just to look at the formula. So the cumulative percent frequency can either be the cumulative frequency divided by the 50, which makes that a percent, or it makes that a proportion, times 100, which makes it a percent. Or we can just do the cumulative frequency divided by 50 times 100 instead of dealing with the dollar $C$8 dollar to get this 50. Or it can just be the current percent frequency plus the previous cumulative percent frequency. Remember, that's the same way that we calculated the cumulative frequency. Notice that this was just previous plus current. So let's get those numbers in. Um, 12, 38. 62, 92, 100. So this part's done. A lot of work, but we did talk through this. Hopefully, this makes a little bit more sense. Notice in Excel, you've got this little mark here. All it's telling you is that the formula to get this value differs from those that are around it brings your attention to it to make sure that you're doing things correctly. OK, let's continue. We need to choose the percent frequency polygon. So now we're going to talk about graphing. A percent frequency polygon. Along the horizontal axis, you starts with 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, assuming that's going to be 100. Notice the marks are at 40, and then the midpoints, 55, 65, 75, 85, 95, and then 100 at the very top, which means I'm going to make the left window a little bit smaller, make the right window a little bit bigger, and create a new column. I'm going to call this value. So to capture the 40 dot, we're going to make this value 40. To capture the next dot, it's not 50, it's the midpoint, 55. The next dot's at 65, 75, 85, 95. Boy, we're one dot short, 100. So that last class they're, they're really referring to is the 100 and above. Frequency was 0. Cumulative frequency had to be 50. 
percent frequency was zero, cumulative would have to be 100. So let's go ahead and insert our um, line graph. Insert, line, we'll get dots on it. Click on that. It's trying to figure out what we want to do. It's not doing a good job. Let me resize this so that we can see it on one screen. Okay, it's resized. It doesn't give us, it doesn't use the data that we really care about. So let's go ahead and select data. When I click on select data, this window pops up. And I'm going to remove all of these options and start from scratch. We want to graph on the y-axis the percent, the frequency percent. The frequency percent is in this column D. So chart data range, it's going to be those values. I'm going to edit it. When I hit edit, this comes up. The series values are what we just placed there. The series name is actually percent frequency and OK. Notice the horizontal values are 1 through 7. We don't want that. What are the horizontal values? What should they be? Click Edit. Axis label range pops up, and it's this column. Or what may be more helpful is to give it this column. Hit OK, get rid of this percent frequency dot, and there's our line graph. All we have to do is now is to compare this line graph with one of the three options. Option C doesn't look close. This line graph, it kind of dips down in the middle. There's no dip down in the middle there. There's a dip here, but the dip happens at 85. The dip in reality happens at 75 which corresponds to this. Next part is the ogive. Notice the difference between the frequency plot of part C and the ogive. The ogive is cumulative frequencies. So instead of column D for the data, we're going to want to do column E for the data. So let's go ahead and select data. This pops up. I'm going to remove that. The data I want to include is the cumulative frequency. I'm only taking it until the 90 to 100 class. Click on the series, edit. This window pops up, it's QM percent. The axis labels, we're going to edit, but wait before we edit it and give it this last column. Remember that this bottom doesn't count. We did not include it anywhere. Also note where the dots are on the graphics, 40, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. So the values really are 40, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. And we don't need this bottom row. Let's go back to Design, select Data, edit the axis labels. Axis labels are those values. OK, hit OK. And this is an approximation of the correct OGIV. Let's see which one it fits. For C, 60 is looks like about 12 and a half. 60 is about 12. Here, 60 is over 25, so the second one's not correct. 60 is small, so it could be the first or the third at this point. So we just need to detect the difference between the first and the third. 
looks like between the first and the third, the big difference happens at 80. In the third, 80 is between 50 and 75, midway between. In the first, 80 is above 75. 80 is 62, so we know it's not A, which means it's got to be C. That value looks like about 62, doesn't it? I think so, too. And that's the end. So here's some things that we did in this problem. Took the data, hand-coded it into Excel. From that, we calculated cumulative frequencies and cumulative percent frequencies, as well as percent frequencies. We did it using the power of Excel. We created formulas. B4 over $C$8 times 100. We remember why we had to multiply by 100. We remember what the dollar sign does, so we know what $C$8 always refers to. Cell C, cell 8, cell C8, sorry. And that won't change as you copy and paste. The B4 refers to cell B4, but since there's no dollar signs involved, as you copy and paste this cell D4, it will change the B4 uh, relative to that. Always two to the left. And then we, calc we created two graphics. The first graphic we created was just a frequency polygon. The second was a cumulative frequency polygon. And that's what an OGV is. It's a cumulative frequency polygon, which means the curve is always going to be non-decreasing. It's always going to end up at 100%. It's always going to start at 0%. Think about why that has to be the case. Before we get going, um, this problem, first one was 2 points, 4 points, 6 points. Let's go ahead and submit this and hope that we got six points. I'm going to submit anyway. And boom, we got them all right. Makes me feel good. Hopefully it makes you feel good too. I hope you have a very good day. Take care of yourself. I'll talk to you later.